Puri for doing the, the webinar for us. Um, and uh, Sean is going to be telling us all about uh, Giglets. And interestingly enough, the first time I came across Giglets was last week when I was working with some students who are studying Gaelic at the university. And uh, I was mightily impressed by the, the content and just the illustrations and the colours, all, all very engaging. So uh, looking forward to, to this session. Um, so I think uh, I think Robert is maybe recording the session, hopefully. I'll uh, let you. I am, yes. OK, Robert, great. So I'll let you uh, share your screen. Um, Shona, thanks. Uh, and uh, we are recording the session, so you might not want to have your camera on, OK? Because uh, we'll, we'll be uh, set, sending it out as an archive. Thanks so much, Craig. Um, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hopefully yeah. you can all see my screen now. Is that, is that all good? Okay. Yeah, all very good, yeah. Great. Uh, thanks, everyone. Really bless him and we'll wait and see what, what's, hopefully, what, even if he can pick up some bit. I'll turn that mic off. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, I wasn't sure if it's someone telling me they can see my screen or not, but I think we're all good to go. Um, Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining uh, and thanks for that introduction, Craig. Um, as Craig says, my name's Shona McCrudy and I'm from Giglets. Uh, my background is as a primary teacher before I joined Giglets back in 2018, mainly in a training support role, uh, though currently um, moving into product and operations, but delighted to be with you today to tell you a bit about Giglets. I'd love to know if you already know about Giglets. Have you used Giglets? I do have a little eye on the chat box. Um, so if you have any questions, you can pop them in there as well. Um, and so in our short session today, um, I'm going to tell you a bit about what Giglets is, its key features, tell you how schools use Giglets to support, to engage and to include all their learners. And I'll give you a short demo of the platform as well. But as I say, if there's any questions as we go, please do pop them into the chat box and I'll do my best to answer them as we go. Um, and so to start with what Giglets is, um, you'll have seen by the headline of today's uh, webinar that we're an online literacy resource. Uh, we are an, essentially an online library with so much more. Um, Giglets uh, is designed to engage and support all learners in their literacy learning. We really want to inspire a love of reading and many schools use Giglets as a key resource to teach comprehension and to teach reading strategies. Uh, Giglets is a very dynamic resource. It's used in lots of different ways and we are used in more than 450 schools across the country. Uh, Craig mentioned our link with Gaelic. Yes, um, after our English texts in the library, our Gaelic library is the second biggest. Um, we've got over 450 texts in English, but we have over 130 in Gaelic and all schools um, who offer GME get access to Giglets through our partnership with Borshna Gaelic. Um, English medium schools um, use Giglets um, in a number of different ways and they get access in a number of different ways. Some schools subscribe um, independently, you know, they, they choose for themselves, whereas some other schools get access through local authority um, partnerships that we have as well. So here are just a few of our testimonials. Um, lots of people appreciating um, how Giglets increases engagement and the capacity for differentiation as well. Um, and as I mentioned, schools use Giglets generally to support literacy priorities, um, but also to support language learning. We have uh, 38 different languages currently on Giglets um, and um, schools use Giglets as well to support their learners um, who have dyslexia or who are visually impaired as we have accessibility options that I'll tell you a little bit more about as we go. Uh, but first, the key features. Uh, I like to categorise them into the text, the tasks and the pupil experience. And so starting with the texts, our library currently contains over 
uh, 1,350 texts across 38 different languages. So English is our biggest library, uh, but we have uh, 37 other languages, including Gaelic, including Scots, including French, German, Italian, and Spanish, and lots of other languages as well from around the world. Uh, last summer, we added Ukrainian to the library, and I know we've got texts coming out soon in Nepali as well. And um, within the library, you'll find lots of different text types. So we've got um, fiction and non-fiction. And within that, you'll find traditional tales, adapted classics, uh, stories from around the world and Giglet's originals. So texts that are exclusive to Giglet's um, and they often turn out to be our most popular texts. You'll see a few covers there, you know, we've got the, the Giglet's version of the Jungle Books, very popular, um, especially given the animations that are included. And uh, talking about animations, we do add features to engage learners, but also to help them better understand the text. Uh, so we have illustrations, theme music, audio and animations. Now the theme music is absolutely my favourite feature from that list. Um, it's a hugely powerful tool for drawing readers in, uh, getting them excited about what they're going to read and helping them understand the overall theme and emotion of the text. The audio is incredibly helpful um, so that the children can listen and follow along with the text and animations are designed to aid understanding of key events and to aid visualisation as well. They're relatively short, they don't include any spoken word and in fact I have a little example to show you. Um, so if you want to have a guess at what text this might be from, uh, do pop into the chat box what you think. I do hope you're familiar with it. Even a wee thumbs up to let me know that the audio is working would be appreciated. There we go. There we are, that's our animation there. I'm so glad to see a few nice comments coming in and appreciated the thumbs ups as well. Alana, you were absolutely first in. That is an example of an animation for Jack and the Beanstalk on Giglets. As a teacher, there's a huge amount you can do with that. Um, at minimum, the children are uh, more engaged in the text. Um, and at maximum, you could use that for, for prediction, uh, for inference-based uh, lessons, um, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I'm aware. And then Giglets provides teachers with uh, hundreds of tasks prepared already. We offer sets of higher order thinking skills questions, automatically marked reading test questions and cross curricular tasks linked to CFE as well. Uh, these tasks are all ready for the teacher. They can be edited, they can be printed and teachers can create them all from scratch as well. But the most important thing is, of course, the pupil experience when they read on Giglets. And so when children read on Giglets, they do have control over the font size, the colours, uh, the font itself. And there's some tools to help them with some of that comprehension work as well. Uh, you can see there a screenshot from uh, the, the pupil reader on, on Giglets. So there are eight different font sizes. Um, the font is easily increased at the press of a button, um, text will move on to different pages or there'll be a very small amount of scrolling depending on the text type and the age that it's pitched at, uh, but very easy for children to, to change the font size. We make sure that those buttons are big enough to be pressed with a finger or easily um, 
navigated to using a, a mouse or a trackpad. And then there are 10 options in terms of different colour combinations. So we've got a uh, black font with different coloured backgrounds that you can see on the right hand side there. And we've also got black background with yellow text and black background with white text, which children and adults quite often prefer when reading on a screen. And finally, there's the font choice for children. Now, everything um, on the teacher side of Giglets, the, the pupil side of Giglets when they log in um, is in font one, as we call it, which is in fact Heinemann Education, uh, a font I'm sure you're very familiar with designed for reading in primary schools. You can see it previewed there in the top right. My font uh, in the presentation should be that font, but I'm afraid was having some issues today. Uh, and we also offer font two, which you can see previewed on the bottom right there. And that is open dyslexic, where the characters are very evenly spaced. They're very uniquely shaped in line with recommendations from the British Dyslexic Association. Um, to the learner, they will choose between font one and font two um, so as not to impact on self-esteem or, or label any children. It is simply a preference which font they would like. Um, and everything for the teacher is within uh, is uh, using font one. So obviously these options, the, the size, the colour, the font choice, um, they are there to support those who are dyslexic or who are visually impaired. But in our experience, we find that all children love being able to personalise the choices. Uh, and I do believe prior to my uh, joining Giglet, so a good few years ago, that um, there was a, a collaboration between Giglets and Call Scotland to ensure that these choices were suitable. Uh, and another nice story that I do like from uh, Giglets is that apparently purple wasn't initially once one of the choices, but there was a pupil uh, in a class who really wanted purple, wrote to Giglets and asked for it, and there we go. The, that's how purple came to be one of the choices. So that's a quick introduction to the key features. I'm going to jump onto the platform to show you about. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think. If you've got any questions, do pop them into the chat box. Um, but hopefully you should now all be able to see Giglets. Um, so this is the pupil side. When children log into Giglets, they've got a very um, easily uh, easily to navigate platform, uh, easy to navigate platform. Um, they land in their library, they'll see the last book they were reading, is that what they want to read again? Or their new books will appear at the top here. And once they choose the book that they would like, they go to their dashboard and they'll see if they've got any tasks that the teacher has given to them. So really there's no need for scrolling here. I can simply choose read my book or start my tasks. For the teacher, they log in, they can navigate to the library, they can choose the books that they would like to assign to their pupils. Um, they're all arranged by level, which is bespoke to Giglets. So our uh, lowest uh, our level with the lowest reading age is kind of bright star here which features a lot of nursery rhymes whereas our most challenging texts are at hurricane lightning and typhoon level which is really going into third level texts um, huge capacity for differentiation uh, within this whether it's with the text itself or uh, with the provided tasks so the teacher simply chooses the book page, gets some more information, and then gives the book to the pupil um, and the tasks if they would like. And as you can see, you've got a choice of cross-curricular tasks as well. Another feature that the teacher can make use of is shared highlighting. Now that is when the teacher can highlight words or phrases or passages of text in the book that will then be highlighted when the child is reading. So if we highlight this first sentence here, 
Don't Make Believe in Dragons, this text is one of our most popular. It's a Giglitz original um, about dragons. So uh, have you read any other books that feature dragons? They might have watched TV shows, might have um, watched films, um, just encouraging them to make some connections here. And when they read, they'll then see that teacher note. The teacher can also print any sections they would like if they would like a hard copy um, or if they'd like to download a PDF of the, the text. So that's the teacher having chosen a text and allocated it and done some shared highlighting. And then for the pupil, we've got our cover here. I was reading on a large font size. There you go, that highlight is now visible for the pupil reading. So view teacher note. Have you read any other books that feature dragons? They can easily increase the font size. Jumps back to the smallest size. There's font one and font two, and you can see that pulls across the buttons as well. Uh, so that there's continuity and it will stay the same if they log in on another device. Uh, they'll have the same choices already um, in place. Uh, and then we've got the colours as well. Uh, I see we've got a question in the chat box about audio and it's a great question. Now, Giglets provides audio on many of our texts. Um, and as you can see, we've got the little speaker icon up here, which tells me I do have audio with this text. Um, the tasks don't have audio with them because they are editable. The audio then wouldn't match the text. But we have two options there. Uh, the teacher can uh, add their own audio if they would like. It's very straightforward to record audio on, um, say, on my phone, send it to my computer and upload it. Um, and the other option is that Giglets is fully compatible with text to speech screen readers. So if that's uh, already available on the device or within the browser, then uh, that could be put to use when navigating Giglets tasks um, or, or the notes, for example, that we just looked at there. And the child can move through using these arrows. They just tap through. And then they'll come across the tasks that they have to do uh, as they are reading. Children can also make their own highlights, search the text, and message the teacher, especially if they're not sure about something specific. So if there's this word here, we can choose add a note or ask the teacher. And then the teacher has an indication of exactly what the pupil was looking at. OK. So if I go back to my dashboard um, I'll briefly show you the questions. We've got our reading test questions, which are automatically marked question sets. I'm going to change my font back. There we go. Um, so we have single select multi-choice questions. We have multiple select uh, multi-choice questions. We've got different question types to keep it interesting for the children and to ensure that they're developing a really deep understanding of the text. Children can type in with finding copy style questions and um, they can dictate and I'll talk a bit about more about that in our, our next question set. They can also use highlighting, right click copy, right click paste, control C, control V um, or my favourite way to do finding copy is to do um, highlighting, clicking and dragging but I think it might not work for me today. There we go. And I'm sure it's small. There we go. So a nice way to do it is just highlighting, 
clicking and dragging. So just a small amount of technical skill required with these questions, but all the question sets follow the same sort of form. So once they're used to it, um, they can uh, just follow that in every set. Clicking and dragging there. Likewise with our sequencing questions. We've got true and false. Underlying which is um, tapping the words. Or clicking, there we go. And then sentence completion. Now the children get instant feedback to let them know how they got on. They can go back and change their answers if they'd like. Um, and then it can be submitted to the teacher. So if I choose task complete, that'll go to the teacher to mark and to have a record of. With the higher order thinking skills questions, of course, by their very nature, they require a more comprehensive um, um, answer. They, they require more subjective marking as well. Um, and so there's a free form text entry box, uh, as you can see. Um, pupils can type into the box or they can use dictate if they have that available on the device that they're using. Uh, another way that many schools use the, the higher order thinking skills questions is for them to use it as a listening and talking prompt. Um, so to discuss the answers rather than to, to write them down. Um, but they could also view the questions on screen but write their answers in a jotter if that works better with the age and stage that a teacher is working with. Uh, and so the answers can be added to these boxes and then like with the reading test questions, they can be submitted to the teacher or saved for later if the child's not quite finished. The higher order thinking skills um, includes a self-assessment, as you can see here, um, so they're asked about their confidence doing the task and uh, feedback questions based around two stars and a wish. Uh, but again, those are entirely um, personalizable. They can be personalized. Um, the teacher can choose what questions are asked. So there we go. That is a very quick overview of the Giglets platform, its key features and um, how a pupil would navigate it as well as how a teacher would use it. Um, I have a couple final slides, um, but if you have any questions, I'm not in a rush, I'm more than happy to stay and answer them. But just a quick note on the other support available from Giglets. Um, now, Giglets provides training. Uh, whenever a school signs up to Giglets, um, we offer a full initial welcome to Giglets training to make sure that everyone is confident navigating the platform and um, to ensure that everyone um, has a good idea of how it will be used in the school. We also offer best practice events. We actually have those next week. We've got um, webinars on representative reading material within Giglets and exploring different cultures with Giglets. Uh, you'd all be more than welcome to come along and I'll be sure to send, uh, hopefully send the link out to you um, for that uh, or it'll be advertised on our social media actually. Uh, we meet with schools regularly to make sure that they're happy um, to answer any questions that they might have. And we also offer online storytelling events that have proved very popular um, with our schools. So we host online events where we share a Giglet story. Schools from all over the country come along. And most recently, we held ones for World Book Day. Um, and I believe we reached over 10,000 children with those events. Um, so absolutely delighted to share stories. Uh, and obviously we have a help desk as well that can be accessed via phone or email.
There we go. Um, if you do want to have a look at our CPD events that we're advertising, do check out our social media. Um, it's at Giglets uh, on Facebook and Twitter, or it is um, at Giglets Edu on Instagram. And if you are interested in contacting our help desk, it is support at giglets.com if any questions come to you after today. But I'd like to say a big thank you for uh, hanging around and hearing me talk about uh, giglets. Um, as I say, happy to answer any questions you have. And thank you very much, Craig, for the invite. Yeah, thank you to you. Thanks, Shona. It was excellent. It's good to see an insight and to see all those nice uh, accessibility features built in. So if you do have uh, any questions from Shona, please either stick your hand up uh, with your mic ready or pop your questions into the chat box if you have them. Is, is it expensive, Shona, for you know, if school was to sign up? Does it depend on how many books they take? Or um... Um, So the good thing is they get access. If a school signs up to Giglets, they get full access. So they get access to the, the whole library, all languages, all tasks. And mm. what I... Uh, didn't mention is the library is always growing it was perhaps hinted at but the library grows at, at least 15 texts in English every term so you are getting that added value uh, subscriptions are based around school size and so it is best if anyone was interested that they they contact us let us know their school size and our regional account manager would would let you know um what the the options are basically uh, and Shirley has put in a link to one of our case studies in the chat box uh, as an example of how a school in Wales, St Andrews Primary School, used Giglets um, to include and, and engage all learners. So um, especially given the subject of today's webinar, that would be great follow up reading if anyone was interested. OK, thanks, Shona. Um, so Helen saying thank you, Mrs Hopper. Thank you, very informative. Thank you, Mrs uh, Hopper. Irene's popping something into the chat, I think. And thank you, Helen, as well. So, another chance for any more questions for Shona? And uh, just to let you know, we have recorded the session, so if you want to share it with uh, any friends or colleagues or look through it yourself, um, the link will be sent out to you. My colleague Robert will send the, the link out to you. Great, thanks Alana, thanks Louisa. Yeah, it is Irene, it's a very colourful and uh, engaging resource. Yeah, it looks, looks really good. I'm glad you think so. We're very lucky to to work with some some really talented artists that mm -hmm. you know bring everything to life, uh, and then the music as well. Yeah. Um. Great. Uh. Claire and Paul are okay. Yeah. Thanks. This is great. So. Thanks, uh, Paul. Thanks, Claire. Thank you. Well, if there's no other questions, we'll uh, close the session. Just again, thank you, thank you, Shona, for uh, such a, a, a excellent, informative uh, webinar. And thanks to everyone for attending today. OK, so thanks, everyone. See Thank you again. You. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.